So hey everyone, I'm going to talk about what we did for the, for the challenge. And so to give you an overview, we, what we did is just jumping straight into it where you have the interactions. Um, so we used, so given the data set, we, we didn't do any data augmentation or anything like that. We just took this data set of 100,000 summaries and articles and we encode them uh, using a using BPE, the BPE encoding scheme, um, using a vocabulary of 1,000 um, uh, word piece units. And we do this to, in order to preserve the format of the articles and summaries. So the articles actually uh, come both upper and lower case and without any tokenizations. Um, and we wanted to train a system to preserve this format as that, um, well, you're able to output um, the same format as the, as the target ground truth summaries. And also another, another reason is to reduce any out of vocabulary words that could take place. And so we used the BP encoding scheme and then we actually used an off-the-shelf off abstractive summarization system from this paper um, called Fast Attractive Summarization with Reinforced Selected Sentence re Rewriting from last year. So I wanted, I wanted to test this out to see how well this will work also for German. And the system is actually a hybrid system um, con uh, consisting of two components. There's an extractor which is trained to select salient sentences from the input articles. And then there's also an abstractor which paraphrases each sentence, which was extracted sentence by sentence to construct the final summary. So, a little bit about uh, more of this system. Um, we thought, yeah, so that extractor is a recurrent neural network which is trained to select salient sentences from the article. And the abstractor is another RNN, a separate model, separately trained to paraphrase each sentence independently. So, not as a whole, but sentence by sentence. And both components are first trained separately and then jointly tuned using reinforcement learning. And the extractor looks like this. So you, first you have some convolutional layers which produce some sort of a initial representation of these input sentences. But by the way, we are using a 50,000 um, BP vocabulary for this. And then you kind of uh, encode each sentence using, using this um, um, LSTM layer here. Um, and then basically the, the, you have, a, it's like an, again, some sort of an encoder-decoder approach. So first you encode, and then you decode um, with another um, LSTM where you um, try to output basically the labels, um, which sentences you want to extract from this article. And you keep outputting label, labels until you output a special um, end of extraction label or whatever. And then the LSTM stops. And okay, for example, now here we selected three sentences um, to be extracted. This is how this component works. Uh, and you can train this um, using this data set by aligning, for example, given the, the summaries that you have, the German summaries, you align them to the articles to find what is the closest for each summary sentence, what is the closest article sentence? And then you can get the labels, for example, let's say the first one and the fifth one are the most salient for this article. You can do this for the whole data set. Um, um, for the alignment, we use in Rouge, the Rouge scores, Rouge, score, Rouge 1 score, something like that. So um, then you can train this model, this model to extract, to, to select sentences. The abstractor mod module is a standard RNN encoder decoder with an attention, uh, which is basically trained on the aligned pairs of sentences from the articles and summaries. So give an article sentence, paraphrase it to produce a summary sentence. And it is similar to the translation models, um, which I'm sure probably you, you're aware of. Um, and so, yeah. And then given that you have these two separately trained models, this, this approach, the system is tuning them jointly using reinforcement learning. So given that you have these two model modules, an extractor that can select sentences and an abstractor, which can paraphrase sentences, 
you can tune those journeys so given that you have uh, document sentences from D1 to DM4 here in this example. You can use the extractor to produce labels and then you can use the abstractor to paraphrase those labels, uh, uh, to paraphrase those selected sentences from the articles. Uh, and then you can take those and produce some sort of a reward comparing the summary produced using these two components to the, uh, to the summary present in the training data set. And you can use this reward to, in, in, this, in this paper, the, um, to do an update again to further tune this extractor module to tune the extractor to select better sentences given, given what you have produced in the end. Um, and you can do this, and, and so in, the, in this paper they only tune, and also we, we only tune the extractor, um, because tuning the extractor is a bit more difficult. Um, but the, yeah, so this is how this works. So you, you do another pass, another training, um, using these two components, tuning this extractor to select even better sentences. This was um, basically overview of the system and yeah um, this is like the overview it's actually using I'm using quite a small model like a single layer and um, uh, extractor with embedding dimension 128 and 256 units and vocabulary 50,000 and uh, again a single layer and abstractor with 128 embedding size and 256 units and again uh, the same vocabulary uh, as for the abstractor. And then so we train this um, and actually I don't really have any results slide because I was hoping, well, yeah. But um, actually the system, the, when we trained it, performed I think a bit worse than, actually to, I think it was the worst in your evaluation, right? It had like 35 rouge or so on rouge one and so on. And um, I think one reason for this Probably it would, it would work better with more data, like if you have more synthetic data and so on. Another reason could be that actually, because this extractor, this abstractor is generating the summaries sentence by sentence, you don't really have any guarantees that uh, the um, the sentences you generate will be coherent, so that the summary sentences will follow each other naturally and so on. This is actually one thing that I noticed when I was inspecting some of the outputs that often sometimes we have one sentence about something and then another one is actually a bit random and jumping off on a different topic, especially for this data set. That's what I observed. Um, and I don't really have um, any samples as well, unfortunately, here, but maybe, well, if you have any, you can show from my stuff. Okay, but that was all that I have. So this is the overview of my system. So any, any questions? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't make the point why that why your summary will change the topic sometimes. Um, because the this abstractor module is trained <coughs> sentence by sentence, so it will take a sentence from the article and paraphrase it. And because there's no um, there's no way to um, when, you're, when you're generating the let's say a multi sentence summary of four sentences. Yeah, and you do it sentence by sentence, you paraphrase each sentence, article sentence individually. There's no way if you train an end-to-end -end model to go from the whole article to the summaries, hopefully well the model will be able to generate a fluent summary as a whole. But this this model is doing it sentence by sentence, meaning that um, there's no guarantees that if you generate two sentences from let's say one the, the first extracted sentence is the first sentence from the article. And the second one is the 15th sentence, which is really far away from talking about some other stuff. It could be that when you paraphrase them in the end and produce the final summary, the two will have, um, well, they won't, they won't follow each other naturally. That's one challenge with this type of approach, this hybrid approach. So you want to have, ideally, that's also something for future work, you want to have, ideally, mechanisms. If you want to do this hybrid, extractive and then abstractive, you want to have maybe some other mechanisms to ensure that when you paraphrase sentence by sentence you have to generate a coherent summary a coherent summary as a whole. But that do not mean that you introduce new words which do not appear in the source text. Sorry? 
that would not explain how you can introduce new words which do not appear in the source text in your summary. Um, well, that could be also a problem with the model itself, or with the training, I don't know. But or with your encoding. Yeah, or, I mean, obviously it's always possible to produce mistakes when you generate the paraphrase. But, yeah, so sorry, what was your, you were asking why? For example, one of your summaries, they can be called standard circuit here, uh -huh. the fact that the word circuit here does not appear in, in that Wikipedia article. Okay. But you can can you produce that somehow? You you can. Um, I guess it occurs somewhere else in the data set potentially. Yes. So that, that's yes, of course. Yeah. So you're asking um, what is your question? Why why you think why I think the model is producing more of these other vocabulary kind of elements or? Yeah, how you produce words? which do not appear in the source text you want to summarize. Oh, well, well the model is, well, the, the abstractor is not really constrained. It can, it can generate any word from the 50K BP vocabulary, right? So this added, and this added to generate maybe something else which is wrong. Yeah. So let's go. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. So maybe a comment and a question about uh, this hybrid architecture. So for me, it seems a bit unintuitive this, to use this kind of sentence selection approach to go for abstractive summarization because if you do abstractive summarization, you basically want to create some synthesis of the, of the full document. And when you go for the sentence selection, you basically assume that all the important stuff is basically written in one sentence and taking n sentences from the document will give you a representative uh, abstraction or a representation of the document. But you will only have, when you use the abstractor, you get, so you select n sentences and you create n abstractions, right? So you're not actually able to sort of fuse two sentences together from, from the source document. Mm -hmm. So to me, this seems like a bit of a I don't know, strange way maybe for go to uh, abstractive summarization. So maybe you, you can tell us something about the, the English system. Does it perform well for, for English or? Yeah, for English, well, they, for English it performed, last year they, they, it was one of the best ones. Mm -hmm. So there it worked very well. Um, and so I see your point. Um, like, yeah, maybe it's a bit intuitive, like you want to first read the article and then kind of synthesize it, let's say, in your, in your mind if you're doing it yourself, and then write the summary yourself, like using the whole knowledge from the article. But in practice, well, this approach is, yeah, first select information. So obviously there will be a lot of information from the article which is irrelevant to produce the summary. So it's kind of limiting. And then paraphrasing, um, and I agree about this point that you don't have here a mechanism to do sentence fusion and so on. There will be one extension of the system which would be, which would be good. Um, but in practice, actually for English, when I tried this for English as well, the summaries that were produced were pretty good. And uh, one nice thing about this type of system is that if you train an end-to-end -end model from these long input articles, which could be, I don't know, 30 sentences, whatever, to generate a few sentences, these articles are typically very complicated to work with with these encoder-decoder models. So, um, in fact, if you train on uh, some sort of a, I don't know about the transformer, but like an LSTM on the whole article to generate the summary word by word, most likely you're going to run into various other problems like repetitions or maybe you, the, the model will focus really a lot on the beginning of the article. So, if there's a, some very important data on, it will be difficult potentially for the model to be able to use that and integrate it in the summary. But there's various other problems, and this kind of hybrid approach is nice because on a sentence level, these um, encoder decoder models work very well to paraphrase from one sentence to another. That is very strong. Um, so you can generate abstractive summaries, which each sentence actually is pretty good, pretty, 
fluent. Um, but you have this challenge that you maybe don't have, don't have super fluent, whatever. Just, or maybe uh, just sentences are not really the best linguistic representation or units to work with. Maybe it's better to work with phrases or, I don't know. Could be, that would be another, another approach. Yeah? Um, do we have time for another question? Or? Yeah. Okay. So um, my question is about that very slide, um, how you tune the system. So you said you work rather with a small data set, so I'm interested in the um, English data set it was initially trained on, um, this kind of architecture. And let's say if the performance gain was maybe due to the reinforcement learning um, part of it, having more iteration in order to fine tune the extractive part of your system. So, sorry, say again, like if they report the report. So, so you said that one approach to improve the performance um, of your model was to maybe have more data, right? And I was wondering if, let's say, one of the bottlenecks could be the way you um, updated the parameters of your extractor model because it was fine tuned, but tuned to using a reinforcement um, learning algorithm, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I was just thinking if you had more data or more iterations to update um, the parameters of the extractor that the performance um, would see again. And if this was, um, let's say, one of the factors why on the English data set it worked better because they have more data and more iterations. That is a yeah, good question and I think that uh, definitely, so this, so definitely generating the summary is dependent a lot on the extractor. So if the extractor doesn't work, if you generate speaking like bad sentences from the article, the whole thing fails, right? And probably for sure if you have more data, the extraction extraction process will be better. And you'll be able to increase the overall accuracy of the system. So And have you thought about another way to, to tune the parameters of the extractor to see maybe just the performance gains rather than the, the reinforcement earning part, but just put the parameters on a grid and, and see what works. The extractor is an RNN, right? So it would be, I don't know if it will work with grid. So with, the, with this type of approach, one nice thing is that you can get some rewards from comparing to the final summary. I don't know about this grid, how would that work? But, I mean, ways forward will be, for example, different extractor methods, different new extract extractive approaches to improve this, or I think also this synthetic, generating more synthetic data or increasing the data size would for sure be very helpful as well. That would be an easy way to improve the system as a whole. So yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next one will be.